<laughs> We've got mom time here. We're going to be editing a photo of hers and making you guys better at photography. That sounds perfect. All right. Welcome to Flurn, Mom. Thank you. Welcome to Chicago. First time here. First time ever to the... Is it a Big Apple? No. A Big Orange? It's a big... Bean? Snow pile? I don't know. <laughs> What it, it's the Windy City. It's the Windy City. We are doing something really cool today, guys. I can't wait to show you. This is actually going to be a three-part episode because Mama Nace, we got to take advantage of her while we can get her, right? That's right. So we're going to be doing, we're actually going to be taking a photo, using a photo of my mom when she, how old are you in this photo? Oh, probably three. Three years old. So yeah. this is like... 28 years ago this photo was taken. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to be taking this and making it look a little bit, um, we're going to clean it up and then we're going to do that in two separate parts. And then at the end, we're actually going to use like the distressed border and we're going to put that on another picture, which is going to be really exciting. So do you want to tell people why you're here and just a quick little what's up before we get started? Well, I'm here because Aaron moved to Chicago and that's why I came. Well, that's a very, I'm sure <laughs> everyone learned a lot from that. <laughs> They're just going to love that. What did you want to know? Why I'm here sitting here on this stool? Yeah. Why oh, are you in the Flurn episode? I am in the Flurn episode because I support Aaron and I think that he's brilliant and, and talented. And I also have sent him this picture numerous times <laughs> And asked him to clean it up for uh, me, and it has gone nowhere. So I am embarrassing him into actually getting this done. Thank you. It's like the whole, you know, like anyone who does something for a living doesn't do it when they're at home, and everyone wants yeah. them to. You know, it's like, you guys yeah. probably know your photographers. Like every party you go to, every family gathering is like, oh, Aaron's going to take the photos. No worries, guys. And yeah. I'm like, guys... I'm not taking these photos. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, I can beat that one. You know, I'm a dental hygienist. Yeah. And I had this uncle by marriage who was not terribly pleasant. And we went to a family gathering at one point, and he took his denture out of his mouth and said, what do you think of this? And you're like, I think put it back in your mouth, you gross man. Yeah. Is that he's, it? He's dead. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, well... On Whoa. that note, let's get into this photograph. <laughs> yeah. That sound? Today we're going to be focusing on the frame itself. And then in our next episode, we're going to be going actually into the photo. Can they actually see the picture now? Yes. Oh, they can. That's oh, that's the cool. Joy of technology. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Oh, I'm so cute. You're a cutie pie. Yeah. So we're going to go in here. We need to fix some of these creases and things like that. So this sort of thing, that sort of thing. Now, the biggie here is we're going to fix that and uh, develop our plan of action with that. Basically what I wanna do, this sort of thing is gonna be relatively easy, but this guy, that's a that's a pretty big crease there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda cheat and we're gonna copy this area oh, that's smart. over from here to there. Isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah, cheating's good. Cheating is great in Photoshop. Yes, in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, in real life, also great, but not if you get caught. Right. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. It's gonna be really cool. So developing a plan of action is just a good way to keep you guys from, you know, starting to do this, this sort of thing. You're gonna get into it and you're gonna be like, oh, it sucks, I'm doing it the wrong way. And then you're gonna figure out, oh, you know what, I could have just copied that. So that's what we're gonna do. Perfect. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna hit Command J, so it's gonna duplicate this layer. And we're gonna make a selection with our lasso tool. You can really use whatever tool you want to select this area out. Okay. Just an area that's about as big as the other area on the other side. Okay. And I'm going to hit Command-J on that, too. So Command-J just duplicates whatever's in the selection. So okay. now we got that. Oh, it's on its own layer. We need to flip it around. So we're yeah. going to hit Command-T, right-click, and say Flip Horizontal. Yeah. That flips it around. And now we just put it in place. Aren't you clever? Isn't that not the hardest thing you've ever seen? And it made my arm thinner, too. It works. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, I kind of look crippled, so let's not go there. Okay. Deal. We won't make you into a cripple. Um, Thank you. I just, I need to stretch this a little bit just to get it kind of like to where it yeah. actually fits. You can see it's not exactly lining up. Yeah. There we go. Now, the next thing we want to look at is, does it, does it actually blend in? No, it's darker. It's darker, right? But it's darker in some places and lighter in other places. It's kind of weird, right? Okay. So let's try a couple things. Let's put a layer mask on there and then I can just use my brush tool and I'm going to paint black at like 50%. And this is going to help clean up that border around there just because it's, you know, we don't want 
a really harsh, solid border there. Okay. All right. But we would like the rest of my arm. You want the rest of your arm? Yeah, oh. what the hell. Okay. Well, all right. There you go. Oh, and your little shorts. Oh, my shorts. Oh, yes. Include the shorts. The lovely. There we go. Yeah, since this since this photograph was taken in Boston. In Boston. We can include the shots. There we go. You're looking great, Mom. Thank you. Now, the only thing, like right here, it's still not blending in together, so we're just going to use our brush tool and paint black at about 50% there and just kind of like get that now, to... Why does painting black make it lighter? That's an awesome question. We're using a layer mask. And right. for those of you guys who don't use layer masks often, basically, if you have a layer mask on a photo, on a layer, it just makes the layer either invisible or vi visible. So basically, we're just painting away to make that part of this layer invisible, which is blending it with the layers underneath it. Okay. So by painting black, we're basically painting that part invisible, and that's going to help it blend in with everything else under it. Wow. Cool, huh? Yeah. So that's pretty cool, right? We already took care of a relatively hard thing to do. Yeah. Now, if it's too dark or too light... That wasn't that hard. I did it really well. You did such a good job. You can use levels on these things, too, to make the grass either lighter or darker as it needs to. Let's just lighten it up. So we're going to click on this layer, hit Command L for our levels. And now we're going to bring this over here. And the output level, I'm just going to click and drag in. You can see how it's taking what the darkest point in there and just making that a little bit lighter. And yeah. that's just going to help it blend in. Hit OK. Yeah. Boom, right? Excellent. Excellent. Now, How we're ready. How much would you charge for this if I wasn't your mother? A million dollars. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good thing. And I wouldn't do as good of a job. Well, it's a good thing that I'm your mother. It's a very good and thing. And it's a good thing that you already have your college education because <laughs> I wouldn't be able to afford it after I paid you a million dollars to fix the, fi fix the photo. These things are true. Yeah. So, what do we want to do next? I would just want to, let's take care of this stuff here all around the edge. Okay. And, guys, tell me what's your opinion because when fixing a photo like this, you can go like full into it. You can just like totally try to make it perfect, perfect, perfect. I kind of like it to be like still a little bit distressed. What do you think? I don't know. I don't want those lines in my face. You don't want the lines. In, you mostly just care about your face, huh? Well, and this goober area. And the goober area. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. Well, let's try, um, you know what I think we can try for, for this sort of thing. We're just going to do the border and then we'll do the, we'll do all the dark okay. stuff. Okay. Uh, got... See, if I were doing the border, mm -hmm. I'd just cut it off. Oh. The border makes it, Mom. You think so? Oh, yeah. Gotta have oh, a border. okay. See what I know. Well, everyone's opinion is valid, except for yours when you go to the <laughs> Doesn't work. Okay, so we've got a couple tools. We can use the healing brush, we can use a clone stamp tool, or we can use a patch tool, and those are going to take care of the stuff around the edge. I would just generally try a couple things to start off with. You can use the clone stamp tool at like 50% and just sample right over here and paint in an area what you want it to look like. Now, the cool thing about the clone stamp tool is that you can change the percentage on it so it doesn't have to be 100%. So you can just kind of say like, you know, make this pretty cleaned up, but you don't have to go all the way. Okay, now if you went beyond the border of the picture and you went out into the gray part, what would that do? Into this part? No, this part. Oh, it won't let me do anything there. Oh, okay. That's no so worries. So it's not like you have to like totally fill in every tiny little square millimeter. It kind of does it automatically as long as you're in the picture. Is yeah. That correct? Yeah. Well, this area here, this is like, this is just the document here. Okay. This area on the outside, this gray part, that's not even, it doesn't even let you work on that. That's not part okay. of the picture. That's just kind of like the background. But when you're doing this now, do you have to go and like hit all of the different areas or is everything within that circle getting fixed? Oh, good question. That's because um, I'm using this tablet here. Yeah. That's, the harder I press, the more it's going to actually affect. So I can choose dynamically how much gets affected as I paint. Wow. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. Impressive. We just did an episode on the walking tablet. I'm going to get them to start giving me money. Well, that's always a good idea. Because so this, this is your only job. That's true. So. That's true. I have the best job in the world. All right, so this is looking good. This is basically using the clone so stamp tool. So you still want it to have a rustic look? Kind of. Okay. Um, and that's a total personal preference. If I didn't want it to have a rustic look, what I could do is just kind of like go at it from hardcore. Let's, I'll show you guys what, if you don't want a rustic look, here's what I would do. All right. 
grab a new layer, grab something like your marquee tool, and just basically make a selection around the entire thing. Something like that, okay? Now, if you want to minus a selection, to hold down the Alt or the Option key and make a similar selection, you can use the spacebar to move these selections as you're going. There we go, just like that. So now our selection, and I didn't do the best job in the world, but our selection is roughly the frame, the border, right? Yeah. So you could just grab your brush tool and you'd still want a little bit of variation. So grab your brush tool and like 50%, I would just grab some colors here, grab some colors there, grab some colors there. And since I'm painting with my brush tool, it's only allowing me to paint within whatever document border I'm at. So it's, it's only allowing me to paint in that selection. Okay, I personally mm -hmm. like it the other way better. You like it the other way better? Yeah. This makes it look... Fake. It fake. makes it look photoshoppy. Right. Yeah. But if that's what you guys are into, cool. You could also just kind of lower that opacity down. It would kind of like clean it up a little bit and uh, give you kind of the best of both worlds. But it's totally up to you guys. And that's my question for you. Or mom can ask the question. What's the question we want to ask him today? How much... Photoshopping do you do on your photos? Yes. What a good question. Ooh. What a good memory. Rock on. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today, guys. Cleaning up the border. You have your choices between your clone stamp tool, your healing brush tool, and your patch tool. The patch tool is just going to be a little bit more difficult, a little bit more involved than the other ones. I found the clone stamp tool worked pretty well here, and painting that in that selection around the entire thing and just lowering the opacity looked pretty good. What do you think? Yep. Yeah. Rock on, baby. Yeah. Guys, that's the end of part one. Thanks wow. so much for turning in. so quick. I know. I, I'm amazing at Photoshop. I know. I do this for a living. It's do awesome. You, do you really people pay for this stuff? Some people do. I don't know. <laughs> I would pay you for Thanks, this stuff. Mom. Not a million dollars, but i pay you $9.99. There we go. That's a good deal. Thanks for um, pimping out Flern, by the way. <laughs> That's the end of part one, guys. Tune in tomorrow to part two. We're going to be doing cleaning up the rest of the photo. And in part three, we're going to be taking this border and we're going to be putting on a photo of a girl, not my mom, and we're going to have her tits hanging out. What? Yes. Good thing it's not your mom. All right. See you guys. Bye.